Hey, what is going on, everyone? Keel Dyken back again. And we have a special unveiling of Supreme Ultra 2. Wow, can't imagine we've uh, gone from 1.0 to 2.0. Um, it's been a little while since we really discussed anything going on with RetroPie because there really hasn't been much to talk about in terms of uh, performance. But the Supreme team has been back at it again now. Uh, this was sent over to me earlier today. I haven't put any ROMs on it, but uh, for those of you guys already familiar with the Supreme Ultra, nothing has been taken away, but there's been a ton of scripts added. Um, I don't know when this is going to go public, and if you guys have any questions in the comment section, definitely let me know. But uh, this is Supreme Ultra 2, and all the scripts you know and love, RK1 I'm ready, uh, everything's here. You got all of your options. That's primarily what we're going to cover today. And uh, all of this is in preparation for the Raspberry Pi 5. And I know you guys have seen a lot of videos out there in regards to that. People saying last year it was coming out and still haven't heard anything. Uh, but we've been planning for it. And so today I just want to give you guys a unveiling of some of the new scripts that will be available. And I'm not sure... Uh, how this is going to be, re be released, but make sure you guys follow all of my uh, public Facebook pages, uh, RetroPie Official, Arcade Paradise, uh, Keel Dyke and Hobbies. But I can tell you that obviously Patreon members will get this first. So without further ado, um, there's been a lot of emulators that's been added, and I do believe uh, the Supreme team had help from guys over on the Retro Devils team uh, integrating some of the things that are in here. So, uh, again, there's no ROMs on this right now. This is a basic uh, theme that you're currently looking at, but primarily uh, a lot of the ease of use and uh, fluidity, fluidity of the image is more or less based here in the options. So uh, let's go, to go ahead and take a look at some of these options. We have the audio fix, background music. You guys are familiar with that. And what do you guys see here? Uh, this was originally made for Patreon members. Uh, we have the sending light gun menu. So uh, the menu is fully there. What's going on, Dirty? Uh, the, in fact, let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm not plugged into the network right now, and I do know a lot of these scripts uh, have further potential um, if I had my network plugged in. But we don't need them today. We're not going to take a look at all that. So you guys have seen this. This is the uh, Supreme sending controller light gun menu. Has everything here. We have classic light gun, uh, start player one and player two. Let's go ahead and back out. I don't have my gun. Actually, I do have my gun plugged in. I've been doing some testing. There we go. All right. And then I think uh, Dirty is, do you happen to know if the um, auto on feature is still on here? wonder if it's still on here. We'll take a look at it. Uh, send them custom menu. You guys have seen this before. You have all of your bezels. You got your light gun patch. Basic border menu. Uh, custom menu. See Genesis light gun patch. Support. Okay, so you're saying this, the um, always on is still here. Ah, here it is. So uh, they decided this may go public. Send in light gun, serial port, right default. You guys watched my previous videos that I compared the PC menu to RetroPie. And typically, uh, by default, you have to do everything using WinSCP, which is something you should never have to do. But again, this has all been integrated within RetroPie. So you have your camera exposure, gangster setting. Brightness, all the settings you guys are familiar with there. I'm not going to go too far into detail about this are there. And also you have the auto on or always on uh, feature, which is also in here as well. All right, moving on. So they've kind of done some remodeling here. Uh, we have uh, in our other options, we have Amiga auto install configuration editor in 64 tweaks um, i do believe this was on ultra previously i'm not sure if it was in another section and then of course we have saves single folder rpc and uh what is that uae config maker uh retro pie tools 
you know what? Let me go back for a second. So if you guys are familiar with the Zimmo uh, controller deck when you guys are setting up your RK cabinets, so even though this script is here, Suprema Ultra already has it built in, so you don't have to configure anything. I've tested it on my Micro Center RK cabinet because uh, they use Zimmo. Yeah, even though they are switching over from Zimmo, they're going over with basic USB type encoders. So it's automatically built in to work with Ultra. You won't find that with any other image unless somebody happened to already add it. So you're going to have that. You have your reset, all controllers. Uh, aim track still does work with a number of emulators if you're using it for console. However, if you're trying to use this with arcade, you're going to run into some difficulties there. And also definitely want to keep in mind that aim track was never supported to work with Linux. That was something supported by the community and by a couple of community members. So uh, don't message aim track asking for customer support. And again, it is not Linux compatible, but somebody made it work within the community. Retro Pi tools. Let's see here. We got Bluetooth, Clear Playlists, ES Collections, File Manager, ES Pathfinder, GPIO. Um, I know there were some improvements made to this. I can't remember which ones uh, were added. Like if you guys want to add your camera system, everything. Uh, we got your overclock, reference utility, retro arc, run command. Uh, you got your Wi Fi. What is IP? So, and, and just as a quick reference point for those of you who are new to RetroPie, uh, there's been a lot of talk by others in the community and whatnot that says preloaded images and pre-made images have a lot of bloated stuff on here. The community members improved RetroPie. So you take RetroPie and then you add in all this, uh, these additional options. You won't find this on any other image or build, and if you do, it was made by somebody from the Supreme where they took their work and incorporated it, which you can uh, still do. But uh, everything here is to make your life a lot easier. So instead of having to go to the config file to adjust your video settings, you could do it here uh, through your visual tools and also RetroPie tools. So we have your bezel script, bezel project, and also, uh, what was going on, Pi Mania? We're just kind of covering the uh, image right now, some of the new basics. Media removal tool, resolution tool. So we're not going to mess too much with this because if I do, you guys won't be able to see it and then I'll have to reset, but we'll go in. But um, if you guys are familiar, a couple of years ago, I think it was 2019, there was a phrase that we came up with called Arcade One Up Ready. That's what this, let me see here. That's what this is. So this menu that you're looking at is the sole definition of what RK one up pie image means. I had somebody try to tell me that's not what it meant, but this is what it does. But typically you would have to go into your config on your notepad uh, when you put your SD card back in the computer or your USB drive and manually put in what uh, resolutions that you want. Again, this is something community made. This is the one of the advantages of going with uh, a pre-made image is that you have all of these additional tools here at your uh, disposal. Now, it even supports a 4K setting. I don't know. What, let me see if that was a Is that 4K? I don't even know why that would be in here. Oh, it is a 4K setting in here. All right. Well, there is a 4K setting in here, but keep in mind, in order to get the best performance for your RetroPie, you want to make sure you keep the resolution really low and then, of course, let the TV upscale. All right here. So WDG says Ultra V1 and V2 menus are similar, but on Ultra V2, lots of things have been cleaned up and definitely added. And I can tell you the boot time is probably cut in half as well uh, between V2 and uh, V1. Definitely remarkable. I mean, there's a lot of things I've noticed just right off the bat. So here are all your video script options. And the purpose of this, uh, for those of you who may be new, is if you have a TV or arcade cabinet um, and you want to adjust this on the fly from the RetroPie device, you don't have to network in and change anything. All right. So that is the benefit there. We have RetroPie tweaks. We have Skyscraper. We have your splash screens. Uh, Supreme Marquee Tool. So if you guys are familiar with the marquee tool that I debuted here on the channel, uh, that is all still here. Uh, front end switcheroo. So as you guys can see, Retro Devils has been giving some credit here. Uh, 
with the exception of one, because Cody can still be accessed through emulation station. You do have uh, Pixel desktop, which is on the left. You have a track mode. Uh, no other image out there really has a track mode. Um, there is the CRT build, but I think it was kind of wonky. So uh, if you see something with a track mode getting it to work, Supreme has the best devs to optimize it to have it working on this image. Has emulation station, which we're on now. Uh, they've also cleaned up Pegasus because I know Pegasus sometimes had a problem with freezing. I think that was actually a theme issue, but Pegasus is fully working on here as far as I can tell. And Cody is on here too. So that's something else. Um, but a quick update about Cody. A lot of the packs have been removed from Cody. YouTube has been removing a lot of videos. I had a couple of video install tutorials of mine removed. Apparently they don't like it. But Venom and several other images that I've had all have those packages from Cody on there. So you can't access it from as far as I've been told. You can't access and download new stuff. But the ones that I installed, then if they're already on there or even on, what was that image? What was it? Supreme V2 that came out for the 3B Plus. It's on there as well. So thank God we grabbed those in time, right? Uh, I'm not sure the Cody version. We'll take a look at it. All right, let's take a look at Fix My Build. Now, for those of you wondering what is Fix My Build, uh, it's a very unique script to Supreme Ultra. And what this does is it reverts Ultra back to the original settings for when you download it. So usually people mess around with their image. They start tweaking settings and they're like, oh, crap. You know, I should have made a backup before I changed anything. Well, this will revert it back to stock settings so if you guys uh, get this image just the base i think is still 28 gigabytes which is typically normal for some of the pi 4 supreme images because it creates a dummy copy of itself in the background so typically an image like this will probably be like 16 gigs by itself so yeah it makes a copy and has all your well actually not all your settings but it has the original files all backed up so you don't have to reburn anything so if you did make some custom tweaks and then you hit fix my build to erase everything and kind of start from scratch all right system tools we have show partitions show folders system full info monitor in real time board and uh before i forget the other cool feature that they did add is supreme tooling added a feature in here to take screenshots while you're gaming so typically you have to go through RetroArch and hit a particular button to take a screenshot you don't have to do that any longer i haven't actually played around with it but there's a feature in here and where uh you could just take screenshots uh, on the fly so that way you guys can upload it to social media and do whatever you need to monitor in real time uh board temperature let's go back to fix my build fix the retro pie menu layout Fixed displayed systems. Uh, WDG, how many uh, systems does this support now? Is it still about 122, something like that? You have reset all RetroPie controllers. Fix, reset, clean RetroPie uh, setup. Fix Supreme edit tool for 64-bit support. So as far as I know, uh, as far as the 64-bit support has improved, uh, you can run the Dolphin emulator on here, and let's see what else. Uh, you can run the Dolphin emulator on here, and GameCube runs a little bit better as well. So there have been some uh, additional tweaks and modifications added to help enjoy your playability. Let's go back. We have, let's see, do we do this one? Clean up all saves. Clean last play, remove emulation station auto gen game list. I think we already covered this one. System tools, partition space, system and uh, firmware update options. Uh, is that firmware update option in here, the one where people need to update the EE prom, or is that something on a different? Uh, car people still is it possible to e uh, update the ee prom on here from this menu if you know uh dirty i 
I know there's been some hassles with individuals trying to uh, update their EE problems on their Pi devices. So uh, show CPU core status. Let's go ahead and click. Oh, okay. Here's another sub menu here. Okay. So the EE prom update tool is on here. Cool. All right. All right. We're not going to pull up the Supreme Online Toolkit because I'm not connected to the network. But uh, everything that you uh, know and love about Supreme Ultra is still here. A lot of things have been moved around. And also, in order to access the wine menu, you may, you definitely need to make sure that you're using a theme like this that actually sees it. Um, if I loaded my Venom theme on here, even though it has a ton of um, bookmarks on there or uh, tools to access different systems, I don't think I have wine added. So you want to make sure that you're using a theme that will allow you to see wine. There's only very few that would allow you to do it. But if you guys are familiar with wine, uh, Mugen, um, it allows you to run PC applications. Now, I do have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, a non-GPU copy of it, uh, which allows it to run without using a GPU. I'll probably test that this week because that's something else I've been trying to get around to is testing that to see if it can run on a Raspberry Pi 4. I haven't been able to do that, but it might be able to handle it. I'm not sure yet uh, with that particular version. So we'll have to uh, check and see. Let's see, visual art. Uh, we have our overclocking script. And I am using a Pi 4 8 gigabyte model today. So, of course, this does boot on uh, all the RetroPie or the, all the Pi 4 devices. Um, it should also boot on the new Pi 4 that had the uh, additional chip on there for overclocking, which makes it very compatible or very similar to the uh, 8 gigabyte model in terms of overclocking speed. Uh, the last time I saw those in the store, that's back when I was at Micro Center in December of last year. So really haven't seen too many of those in the store. All right, let's move on to, uh, we have system info and weather. We still have that tool here. Gives us our layout. You can still network this with uh, Steam. And um, I was planning on doing a video with this. And you know, I know as far as Steam Link, uh, you can hook up your Steam on this uh, that integrates with your PC, but not every game will play. In fact, I tried God of War and it didn't work. Uh, it, well, it did work, but it kept freezing on me because uh, the network transmission was too much. The file sizes were too big in order to play it. So uh, even though typically all it does is play or get your games remotely, the Raspberry Pi 4 cannot handle every game. And uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting test because I didn't think the Wi-Fi transmission would be enough, but apparently it's not enough. But yeah, some games are just too big for the game to play or certain games to play. But I did manage to play Gears of War. Uh, what was the name of that game? Uh, the, the one that's on Steam. I can't remember the name of that Gears of War. It's not Gears of War 5, but it's the other one, the one that's like real-time strategy. I was able to play that one really well on here, too. Uh, Pixel is brand new. I'm not going to go to Pixel. 64-bit uh, support on here has been uh, incorporated. I'll do some follow-up videos in regards to that. But, you know, a lot of people don't use Pixel desktop support for gaming because you don't want to switch back and forth uh, between different desktops. But let's go ahead and take a look at... Let's go ahead and do front end switcher. And I hope my video doesn't cut out for you guys. If it does, I'll switch back. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to Pegasus really quick. Oh, Tamo Plus was at it? Okay, cool. All right, we're rebooting. All right, we're still rebooting. Most of you probably haven't seen this before. We're booting over to uh, Pegasus now. Let's go ahead. Ah, there we go. 
So that boot time is pretty quick. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely upload this with some new splash screens. All right, so this is Pegasus. If you guys are familiar with this, you have all your same settings. It's just that basically a copy of what is on Emulation Station, but uh, it just gives you a different menu layout uh, for this image for the build. Let's see, where are, are this the options? Background music. So the system info and weather. You know, I don't think there's been too many videos on Tamil Plus. I will probably have to cover that eventually. Configuration, center pathfinder, file manager, audio settings, start residual, system restart, chromium, Cody. We have your wine configuration. Bezel custom scripts. So again, this is just another uh, particular layout you can use to check your settings, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead. Okay, the audio settings are still here. All right, so this is just basically if you want your HDMI and your headphones, uh, if you want to adjust the audio and then se select which output you want it to come out as, then that's pretty much where you would go. Uh, you have Bluetooth. All right, let's go back to switch rule now. Let's go ahead and switch over to a track mode. I should be at the top. Oh, and the other cool thing now is um, typically when you have to switch to a track mode, you have to copy your emulation station controls over to a track mode in order for it to read. You no longer have to do that. All of that's been integrated for you. So all you have to do is switch on over to the front end you want, and you're good to go. Yeah, I'll double check the um, Cody version, Pi Nation. Uh, I'm sorry, Pi Mania. Yeah, that, look how fast that boot time is. So if you guys are familiar with the track mode, everything here is the same. It's basically a copy of what goes on on uh, Emulation Station. But um, as far as I know, GameCube games are running at probably be like 90% now, 95 These are some of the same videos that uh, you would enjoy on any Supreme image running uh, a track mode. And of course, you all you have to do is just load your media. So do you think this will come out in the next month or two or what? Let's go into these are all your videos. You got some of the famous commercials in here and also check out that other channel. I, I actually just recently changed the name called Arcade Media. So you guys can find a lot of these same videos uh, on there as well. Uh, Nintendo and Virtual Boy. So. All these menus are already preset for you uh, as far as a track mode. Stop it, 
think I'll probably load this thing down tonight. Not for a while. So while I was still Supreme wants to make a new theme and add uh, new media. Definitely. Yeah, I would appreciate that because I think a lot of the media that's on here is probably like, you know, five years old as far as uh, what's going on in the attract mode in. I'm actually going to start working with some people, too, to make some new media myself, kind of change up a few things. But this will look really great on an RK cabinet. All right. Do we have any questions? That's pretty much it for tonight. Just want to kind of uh, touch bases on uh, what's coming down the pipeline so you guys can uh, check it out. Obviously, uh, Patreon members would get first dibs after uh, the beta testers have kind of gone through this and we've kind of weeded out anything that might be there. And uh, I might try to incorporate um, a fully loaded image with... Uh, the AE and the Gun 4, if you guys are familiar with my Pistolero image, I might take uh, some of those file settings and then add them over to a fully loaded image. We'll have to see, depending upon how configuration goes. Yeah, I haven't seen this screen before on the collection screen. That's pretty new. All right, let's go back to uh, front end selector. But all in all, this is some really great uh, stuff here. This is a really great job they've done. Let's go ahead and switch back over. All right, make sure you guys like and, su and subscribe. Share this video around. I know a lot of you have been asking for updates in regards to RetroPie. And I know the community has kind of died down a little bit, primarily because it's been very hard for people to get uh, Raspberry Pis uh, in the store. But um, if there's no further questions, guys, that will be it for tonight. And I will catch you all later. But I will be back again with the fully loaded image and kind of covering a few other things. And please hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date. But um, if there's nothing else, that'll be it. And you guys all have a great night. Peace out and see you later. Bye-bye.